For this project, we were given a basic overview topic of what our project was to be about, kinematics and what we learned so far this year. When Ms. Kinney told us that we could pick any subject we wanted to, I knew that I wanted to do it about something that I enjoyed. One of the first things that came to mind for me was cheerleading, which I do almost every day after school. I began to think, how can I relate cheerleading to kinematics? The first thing that I thought of was stunts. So I'm going to give you guys a quick cheerleading lesson for anybody who's not really familiar with the words I'm going to be using. For any of you who don't know, a stunt is basically the things that cheerleaders do when we put people up in the air and do cool tricks with them. Most of you should know what that is. So some of the more complex things that I'm going to be talking about is in the stunt, the main position I'm going to be referring to is a flyer or myself. That's pretty much the girl that gets thrown around in the air. The part of the stunt that I'm going to be focusing on for my project is called a cradle, which is basically when the bases throw the flyer up into the air and catch her. It's called a cradle because the flyer should land in a cradle position kind of like that. Okay, so in my project, I thought it would be really cool if the flyer that I was basing my calculations off of was myself. I decided that the question I wanted to answer is what's the initial velocity that I was being thrown at. Obviously, the first step in doing this is to take a video of me doing the stunt, which I'm going to play for you in a second. Before I do, though, I want you to keep in mind one thing. We're not professional cheerleaders, so our stunt may not be the greatest. I hadn't flown in a few weeks, and the ground was a little uneven, but at least we got me into the air, which is an accomplishment, and it worked for the purpose of this project. So, here that is. Okay, I realized that in order to do my calculations, I was going to need some more data, specifically the maximum height that I reached and the time that it took me to do the cradle. Since I can't tell these things just by looking at the video, I decided to analyze it using the program Logger Pro. The first thing that I needed to do was find a scale to put on my video. Since I'm exactly 5 feet and 8 inches tall, I decided to use myself as the scale. I converted that to 1.7272 meters and entered that into the Logger Pro. Next, I used the, pro the program to mark the position of my left shoe throughout the cradle to see exactly how high my feet went. LoggerPro then produced a graph of my movement, which I'm going to show you right now. On this graph, you can see that the LoggerPro tracked my height throughout the cradle. It doesn't exactly form a perfect arc, but there are multiple reasons why it turned out that way. You have to keep in mind that this isn't perfect projectile motion, it's real cheerleaders. I started recording my position after the bases had dipped down in order to throw me up and they don't completely let go of my feet until I've already started to be thrown upwards in order to push me higher up. The points may be a little erratic, but you can clearly see that the maximum height I reached was 2.814 meters. However, I started the cradle at a height of 2.384 meters, so I ended up being thrown 0.43 meters. The time is a little trickier since the stunt wasn't at the very beginning of the video. I began marking the cradle at 26.29 seconds, and the time at which I returned to that original height before being caught was around 27.13 seconds, so the elapsed time is 0.84 seconds. Now I have my time and distance so I can find my initial velocity. Okay, so as you can see, I've put on my scientist glasses and I'm ready to do the actual equations to finally figure out what the initial velocity is. So the first thing we're going to want to do when solving our equations is write down the variables that we already know. We already know that the gravity is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared because that never changes. From using the logger pro, we figured out that the time is 0.84 seconds and the height, or the y, is 0.43 seconds. Now we're going to have to use an equation to figure out what the VO is. But the problem is, there are no equations that directly state the initial velocity, so we're going to have to use an equation we already have and solve for the VO. The equation that I chose to use is y equals VOT plus 1 half GT squared. The first thing we're going to want to do in order to help isolate the VO is divide both sides by T, so that you get y over T is equal to VO plus 1 half GT. If we subtract 1 half GT from both sides, we get that the VO is equal to y over t minus 1 half gt. When you put in the numbers and put it into your calculator, you get that the initial velocity is 8.7439 meters per second. 
At first you may be thinking what I'm thinking. Isn't that a little fast to be throwing somebody up in the air considering that I didn't go very far in that amount of time? But then again, think about the gravity acting down on me. It's not actually possible to throw me eight meters into the air in one second with gravity having an effect. So this is my original velocity. So just from taking a simple video of a cheerleader doing a stunt using physics, you can find out all kinds of cool information about it. So thank you for watching my project and I hope you have an awesome day.